what's the saying? You have to make a mess before things get better, or I don't know. I'm slowly digging through everything here in the warehouse. All right, so we're working on a couple of things here today. First off, I'm finally getting around to working on writing some iFixit guides. I had a video conference with them and they got me set up with some uh, basically instructions on how to write uh, proper guides and all that stuff. And what I'm gonna be doing for them is basically making guides on how to repair power wheelchairs. I wanna start off with some pretty basic stuff like changing tires and whatnot. Hence this 2023, well, is it 24? It, it's a very new Permobile M3 right here. And I'm gonna start off by making a guide on how to change the caster wheels and drive tires on this thing. So, got a little spot kind of cleaned out right here. So I have a, well, I, I still gotta move a few more things out of the way, but I wanna have a nice clean background that doesn't have trash in it. Like I usually always seem to have in here and gonna take some pictures, get some stuff written up for it. I talked to them probably four months ago and I haven't had a chance to get around to actually doing anything cause well, you know, life and stuff. We're full steam ahead here moving the warehouse and I'm getting the new place set up. I don't know, I think I'm gonna try and stream from the new place on Thursday, so we'll see how that goes. But anyways, one of the things I wanna try out today, and I mentioned it on a live stream, was using some of these, mm, some of these little inflation bag things to see if we can use that to lift a chair off the ground. Because as I'm writing the guides for iFixit, I wanna make sure that they're easy enough to do and people don't have to go buy specific parts. Like this mini aluminum low profile jack. See what I mean? There's always trash. I got this years ago and they're not super cheap. I think the most inexpensive one you can get from Harbor Freight is maybe, I don't know, around a hundred bucks, maybe more, I don't know. But it would be cool if I could include a link and say, hey, just buy these little inflation baggy things off of Amazon and you can use that to lift up your chair. So we're gonna try that out and see if it's a viable option. But right now I'm gonna finish kinda moving some stuff around in here and then uh, I need to find a small like two by four or a piece of board or something like that. I think there's stuff in here, but uh, yeah, I'll show you that here in just a minute. Okay, so here we are on the floor behind this chair now. And after some looking around, I have found myself a piece of two by four. We have a few of these little like inflation bag things. I think there's one more. Yeah, so we've got four different ones here of assorted sizes. This one has a pretty short uh, tube on it, so probably won't use that. But I think one of these three should work pretty well. The only problem is when you inflate these things, they don't have quite enough lift to actually get, let's see here. There we go. They don't have quite enough lift to actually contact the bottom of the chair. So my thought is we will slide a two by four under here, and then we will put one of these lifting bags on top. So I think we're gonna use this uh, sort of longer one here. So let me slide this thing underneath. There we go, kind of get it right behind the drive tire here. You can kind of see the position of that because all we need to do is lift this part up off the ground. So let's start inflating and see what happens. Okay, so that's about as that's about as tight as I can get this thing by hand. And it, oh, actually, the tire's still on the ground, but just barely. Here, let me turn off the brake. Yeah, so it's just barely off the ground. So we're gonna need something just a little bit taller than that two by four there. Or maybe we could just stack two of these in here. So there's another smaller one here. I'm going to slide that underneath the first one. Now, some people might be wondering, why don't I just fold this in half? And that would increase its lifting capacity. Well, these have sort of like a plastic or maybe it's cardboard. There's some sort of stiffener inside here. And also if you fold this material, it's gonna kink and probably leak. A set of three of these was like $12. So they're certainly not the highest quality things in the world. And this may not be the safest way to do this, but um, yeah, we're, we're trying it out. So let's inflate this bottom one here. Okay, now the top one. And this takes a lot of work with the hands. Oh, I think we're getting it. And there we go. I do believe it is now off the ground. Yes, that'll do. 
question is how safe is this? Is it going to slip off? I mean, the whole thing kind of wiggles a little bit. We do still have the rest of the tires on the ground. But yeah, I mean, this isn't like you're working on a vehicle or something, you're not gonna crawl underneath there. So I think this actually would work as a viable option to change your tires. I wonder if there's room for two two by fours under there. I don't know if I have another one. Let me see if there's something else I can find that'll take up that gap just a little bit more. Actually, yeah, to my eye, I think there's room for two two by fours under there. Um, this is long enough, I could probably just cut it in half. Uh, give me a few minutes. Well, looky here. I found an old corded um, circular saw. Some old Black & Decker affair. I uh, don't remember where this came from. It's been in the bottom of that toolbox since forever. And I've had that toolbox since before I was in a chair. Uh-oh. There's uh, a little bit of safety going on here. What do you think? Do we just yellow it and plug this in? Um, Sure. Well, I mean, it seems to turn on. So, uh, huh. what's the worst that could happen? He says using questionable power tools. Um, hmm, well. And that is how you make a mess of a floor. You just got done vacuuming, but now we have two of these. Okay, let's see how this works. Oh, oh, it's, it's hitting on something under there. There's no room for a bag. Uh, hmm. Maybe we can get sneaky and put this in here first. Make sure it's deflated all the way. Then we'll try and jam this all under here. So it goes under just the back part, but that's the plastic cover. And that will rip things off if you're not careful. Oh, actually, this might work. Okay, it's partially under the chair frame. Let's uh, see what happens here. I don't hear sounds of plastic breaking, so that's good. Yeah. Okay, we're off the ground. All right, cool. I think uh, I think this is a viable option. It's uh, gotta be careful not to put pressure on this back cover though, because that will break things, but huh, well, there you go. I think these things will work. Potentially if you just got one two by four and <coughs> one little piece of plywood or something like that and stuck it under there, uh, it might work, so. Anyways, um, yeah, I like it. I was just thinking, are phone books still a thing? I figure you could get uh, a couple of phone books maybe and stick those under there or something else. Hmm. Well, anyways, it gives you an idea of something you could potentially do to lift your chair. I'm gonna research that a little bit more before I include it in the iFixit guide. But there's something else we need to work on right now. Should be pretty quick and that has to do with the van outside. So the hand control setup is still a bit of a mess. Well, the hand controls are fine, but I haven't gone through and taken care of any of this wiring just yet. But the problem we're having is when I push on the brakes, they don't always return back up to the top all the way. And what that hap and what that causes is the brake lights will stay on. So sometimes I'll get out of the van and if I forget to pull up on the hand controls, the, uh, the brakes just stay on. Now, typically when hand controls are installed, there has to be some sort of return spring added because this is kind of a lot of extra weight on the brake pedal and the spring that's built in factory isn't necessarily going to force all that back up. So if you look right here, you can see there, let's see, can you see it? Yeah, there we go. There's a spring right here and that spring is not quite strong enough. So I stopped by the hardware store and I got a couple of other random springs. I could probably just trim that one actually. Um, man, I really need to get all this wiring out of here. Let's go ahead and pull this screw loose right here. I just wrapped this around. We might be able to just use the spring that's already in here and um, cut it a little bit shorter so it gives more tension. But I just basically hooked it like that. Uh, yeah, that spring's got some miles on it. 
And I'll tell you what though, I'm just gonna cut this because it's already in there and it'll be a lot easier. So I'm just gonna guesstimate some amount and we will cut it right here. These super old worn out diagonal cutters. <clears throat> there we go. So we trimmed off about that much. Now we can take our needle nose and kind of bend this into a little hook. Now this spring doesn't do anything as far as making the brakes operate. It's just a return spring. So when you let go of them, it pulls the pedal back up all the way and turns off your brake lights. So this is not anything super critical to the brakes actually functioning. There we go. Okay, now. Uh, let's go look at the brake lights. Uh, they're not currently on. Since the engine's not running, we don't have vacuum. But you can see here that this doesn't quite return all the way on its own. It's very close. So I think I'll go ahead and trim a little bit more of that off. Okay, let's try that. Oh yeah, there we go. Now, that little bit of slack is completely gone. So let's fire it up, get the vacuum pump uh, pumped down all the way, and just verify. Yep, comes all the way back up. Even if you press just a tiny bit, it returns all the way. And there's so much mechanical advantage here, it hasn't really added any extra force. Well, I mean, obviously it's added some because it's pulling up, but it's not enough that I can notice. I can still push the brake pedal down all the way with just a couple of fingers, so. All right, sweet. That will do. That's one of those things where I get to a parking lot, I get out of the van, and as I'm closing the doors from the back, I see the brake lights are still on. And it's fine and all, I can just open up the driver's door and bump this and turn the brake lights off. But if I'm parked somewhere where there's a car right next to me, I there isn't really room to get over here. So, anyways, um, little fix. And now we have extra springs. Huh. If I forget where my springs are, they're behind the seat. I will conceivably never see this because I don't get in and out of this door and when I get out the seat is rotated, but there's a pocket right here. So someone remind me those are there. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to think of what else I need to do while I'm while I'm here. Oh, light. Um I'm not going to get to actually writing the iFixit guides today or taking photos. It's already about 4:30 and oh, there's actually there's there's more echo in here than there was previously. We're, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's gone. It may not look like it on camera, but there, there's a lot more blank spaces in here. But I need to run the computer and some other stuff over to the new workspace. So I think I'm gonna work on getting that done for now. And this video is probably gonna be pretty short. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, let me, let me do some more digging around in here and see, see if there's anything else we need to get done. Okay, maybe I lied. This does take a fairly significant amount of force that it did not before. So we may have to switch to a different spring or set it up a little bit differently or something. Sitting here holding on this takes a lot more effort. <laughs> Here we are. This is the new workspace. I just brought over the streaming computer and the adjustable height desk. By the way, thank you to the person that bought that. It's been super useful over the last, how long have I been in the warehouse? Almost two years? I don't know, whatever, but thank you for that thing. It's awesome. And uh, yeah, I think what we're gonna do is, I, I still haven't figured out the layout in here yet. There's a lot of shelves and cabinetry and stuff and I think I'm gonna do an island for the computers, maybe. For right now, I've just got one set up over there and then the other two are over here. But streaming computer, I don't know, we'll have to figure it out. But I think what we're gonna do, get sidetracked, is for the live stream on Thursday, 
I'm going to live stream with another laptop I've got, and we're going to work on setting up the streaming setup words. It's it's only seven o'clock at night, but my brain's kind of fried at the moment. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, Thursday on the live stream, we're gonna work on setting up the streaming computer. I've got another laptop that'll work for streaming, and I just now found out that using external antennas with my cellular modem, we get just enough bandwidth in here to be able to stream. So I was a little bit worried about that. I thought I was gonna have to buy internet for this place, but I think I can use my existing setup and we should be good. But uh, yeah, nice thing with this place is we have a little bathroom and a sink with running water. There's heat and everything. So uh, this should work significantly better than the other space. Now, obviously it's not quite as big, but that's fine. I can just be efficient with the space. And yeah, that's the other thing too. I'm gonna have to figure out exactly where to put it all, put everything. But I do have another smaller storage unit that's really cheap. And I'm gonna be leaving a lot of the power chairs there for the time being. This is only gonna be a temporary space for maybe up to a year or so. But once again, it's gonna save me a significant amount of money every month. So super happy. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna work on kind of unpacking some things and moving stuff around and sitting in the corner and staring and going, hmm, hmm, I don't know, and seeing where things are gonna go. So I'll pick up the camera in a little bit and, um, ooh, snacks have appeared. Uh, is it morning? I think it's morning. Anyways, I think we're gonna call that good for now. Lots of stuff going on in the background, but making progress and moving forward and all that the uh, the warehouse, they kept renewing the lease and it kept getting more and more expensive and this place suddenly became available. So I will definitely make the jump and use a different space. It's a lot of work moving. It's nowhere near the warehouse, <laughs> but um, I will definitely take uh, an insane amount of savings every month because, well, yeah, I've explained it before. But anyways, thanks for watching. I, uh, now I get to go move around a bunch of soccer chairs. So today's gonna be pretty busy. Um, oh, Thursday's tomorrow. So now I can say, see you tomorrow on the live stream. <laughs> you see, they cheated though, because they put lips and eyes on. <laughs>